It's Lori Pelzer. Hope you're having a winning Saturday. It is beautiful here in South Carolina. For those of you who don't know, I live in Columbia, South Carolina. It is in the middle of the, well, let's put it like this. Um, we're in the middle of where Hilton Head is located, as well as a very uh, popular destination, Charleston, South Carolina. And then there's Greenville, South Carolina. And we're less than an hour, about maybe an hour or five minutes away from Charlotte, North Carolina. So I'm in the middle of all of the beauty of the Carolinas. I'm super inspired to come to you this Saturday. I know there's a lot going on. So um, I thought, well, I'm going to pop in and share some good, solid stuff with the women who are actually home and or those of you who are going to see this later. Welcome in. I am Lori Pelzer. Welcome into the Girl Go Be Great world. I am the founder, creative founder of Girl Go Be Great. I'm going to share with you a little bit how Girl Go Be Great was created. 2008 was a tough year for me and my husband. It was a life-changing year. It was one of those transformational moments. Well, welcome in, Zenobia. You're at home. That's wonderful. And um, that year alone, when the real estate industry crashed, when Wall Street crashed, and those people who invested in the American dream lost everything. Um, those who invested in the American dream, even on the lowest level, lost everything. There was a skill it took to come out of that moment of losing all. I'm going to talk about that skill as we'd have the conversation about women leaders. I have created an event called Girl Lead. And we're going to be live out of Charlotte, North Carolina, March 25th. And the 24th, actually, we'll come in on the 24th. We're going to get together that night, the 24th night. Hi, ladies. Welcome in. Renee, welcome in. Regina, welcome in. Candy, good to see each of you this Saturday. Hope you're enjoying your Saturday. Now, hope the weather is good and solid and you've gotten some fresh air where you are. I'm going to get some more of it. I've gotten carpet clean this morning. We are working on getting gowns and all kind of stuff set up for my daughter's pageant prom shop that she opens every year. Uh, she has a business plan that's set up for it to be a seasonal pop-up shop model. And last year they sold 200 dresses and this year the goal 300 dresses and this year the goal is 600 dresses. So this year looks like a possible strong year and what profitable year. So. I was sharing with you ladies the power behind the skill that I learned when we lost all in 2008 and that's part of how Girl Go Be Great was born, born and how Girl Lead has unfolded. I was in the real estate business for 17 years. We grew our real estate company from the ground up. I came into real estate knowing nothing about real estate. And what I found was it wasn't that you needed to know how to sell houses and it was more you needed to know how to what? Inspire and lead people to make the change they wanted to make, to reach the dream they wanted to reach, to touch the goals that they had set. So essentially my job was not driving you around in a car, showing you houses. My job was to help you push beyond the concept that you couldn't purchase your own home or you couldn't have multiple homes or you couldn't have the American dream of having your piece of America, real estate. That is an American dream. There's another American dream though. For women, it is entrepreneurship. It is leading at your highest level in your corporate workplace. It is leading and flourishing in your home space. It is leading and flourishing in your ministry work. For us, that is a totally different conversation. We don't just lead in one area. So when that crash happened and we lost everything, ladies, everything we own, I didn't lose my shoes. <laughs> I kept my shoes. I didn't lose my dog. Blackie was with us for 14 years before he went to doggy heaven. He's a shit zoo. I didn't lose my children. I thank God for that because when tragedy hits your family, when you've kind of touched on some area that you've never touched in before, you don't know where to turn. You don't know what to do. You get frozen in time. So what skill came up 
showed up was my leader in me. So my whole life coming from teen pregnancy, girl growing up in the projects, I had to always lead, but I didn't know I was going to tap into it the way I had to tap into it when we lost everything. I was leading a real estate company to $22 million in sales in my 30s. That's telling you how old I am, right? <laughs> I'm 46 and proud of it. And I led people who wanted the dream, right? Home ownership. But yet, when you're faced with how now do you reshape your own life to lead? That's where my struggle has been. Even though I've been leading through all of these different layers of my life, I was now faced with the highest call to lead. The highest call to lead. Up-leveling le your leadership, ladies, it's not just you want to. It's almost like you don't have a choice. If you plan to prepare for the significance of what your life looks like and the significance of what your work is calling you to do. So it's not really, I will do that later, I'll try that later, because I realized right then, had I not been a leader, had I not learned leader qualities, had I not really grasped hold of the significance in progressing as a woman leader, my family would not be together right here, right now, today. We would have had a divorce, me and my husband, Mel, because we had a lot of blame each other, hurt, discombobulation is what I call it. Between us, when we lost, oh, you should have managed that. You should have checked that. Why weren't you doing that? When it really was Wall Street, when it really was set up to fail, the system was going to fail. So we had to tap into leadership us both. But unfortunately, my husband tapped into it a little later than me. So I jumped into a mode to move past 100 years of women leading. 100 years. Welcome in, ladies. Sharon and Evangelist Gracie. Miss Diva, loving you to infinity. You know I love your long name, right? Welcome in, Dr. Suzette. And I simply realized that I had not reached my full potential. When I started unfolding that skill set to decide, okay, where do I go from here? How long are we going to stay in the place of loss? What are we going to do next? Where do I go from here? What are we going to do next? So I had to up-level. My up-leveling required me to step into a place of declaring my intentions, how I was going to get my family back on track, declaring my intentions, whether I was going, to, was going to stay a real estate broker, irregardless of the fact that there was really no houses to sell at the time. Was I going to use my skill set to transition into some other part of what I'm called to do? I do a lot of studying, right? And you ladies know that I'm a success coach, right? And on, you can go and see it, I think, on YouTube. It's called The Acres of Diamonds. The Acres of Diamonds. Russell Carnwell. Oh, you got to just touch The Acres of Diamonds. It's about the story behind the founder of Temple University. What level of leadership this man portrayed. Now, he's a man, but what level of leadership he portrayed in terms of figuring out how to bring a solution to open a college for disadvantaged young men. And he shares a story that he actually gave the speech thousands of places and raised millions of dollars to build his school. I'm coming back to that, right? So y'all hold tight because that's going to be significant. So I had to tap into levels of my leadership. For a hundred years, women have been striving with our aim toward equality, right? But the truth is, we've been playing it too small. It's not just equality we should be in search of. It's how do we do what? We build and position. How do we build and position? Not just equality. Future generations are going to be calling for us, the woman leader of today, giving her direction on how does she build and how does she what? Position. That's much larger of a conversation, ladies, than just equality, getting paid what we're worth. It's more about the power play. 
the positioning, how we use that positioning. What do we do with that positioning? How does that positioning make a difference in our lives, ours, and make a difference in the world that we serve? So you may be a woman in the marketplace, meaning entrepreneurial at some level. You may be a woman in the what? Workplace. Or you may be both in the marketplace and the what? Workplace. Whatever your goal is, whatever your desire is, whatever your dream is, as a woman of significance in your leadership, or you haven't yet tapped your leadership and you're ready, the conversation we're going to have in March in Charlotte, those 1.5 days with me, is how to up-level that thinking. Then I'm going to give strategies on how to really take your positioning. That's what I did, ladies. I regathered myself. I used my skill set of leadership qualities, and I took my position back. Say, take my position back. Most of you have lend your position as a leader. You don't really see leadership as large and expansive as it really is. My job is to come through your life and shake it up. Help you see the huger vision that's available to you. By way of through my work, by way of through every other woman's work that have done it before us. Remember I said a hundred years. So what does this look like? Let's go back to the book, The Acres of Diamonds. So I explored every inch of me as a leader. I used, what did I do when I was a teen mom? How did I make it to the next place? What did I do when I got in the military? How did I make it through that four or five years? What did I do when I got out of the military and became a woman in the workplace in my early 20s? Two babies, single, single mother. How did I navigate that process? What did I do when I became a real estate broker? And before that, a real estate agent. How did I use the leadership traits of a great leader to change my life? So this leadership conversation, oh, it's yummy. It's delicious. And it goes beyond anything that you've ever thought leadership looked like. I want you to touch leader in you. Girl, you were born to lead. You lead every single day. This is not just about the woman you see on a magazine. This is not about the woman you see on TV with a reality show or her own show. This is about you truly taking your position as a leader. And if you like me, you want to be a global leader. That's right. I've up-leveled my leadership to be a global leader. Yes, indeed, we are being shaped right now by our economic climate, our social climate. They're trying to turn back the tables of time regarding women and women what? Positionings. So some of you are called to lead in what? Politics. We are in need of you. Some of you are called to lead in your ministry. And you're waiting on someone in the ministry to touch you on the shoulder to tell you you are an amazing minister. Lead. Start with Facebook Live. Start creating your own pool pit. Yes, that's time to disrupt the normal, common leader in you. This conversation and training we're about to have March 25th, this is about seeing things more expansively. And if you're like me, and you got it in you so deep to change lives and make a difference, you want to be global. But you got to start where you are. Where are you? Let's identify that first. Are you leading now, number one, or are you wanting to lead? What aspect of your life that you're leading in? We can start there. It doesn't have to be all external yet, but we can move to that direction. We can move to that external direction. So this weekend of the March 24th and 25th, we'll be in Charlotte, North Carolina. I designed this event like I designed Girl Go Be Great from a time in my life where I had to get back up and say, girl, you better go be great again. Because I thought 
that I didn't have it anymore in me. I'd already spent 17 years in real estate. We failed miserably, I felt. We missed something. And I read a book by John Maxwell. You know, he's a leader guru. Leadership is his DNA. And he said, no, Lori, you didn't fail. You failed forward. So now use what you've learned, the lessons, and get back up. Girl, go be great. Was born out of many of those moments. And I read another book sitting in the bookstore with no money to even buy the book. The times had gotten so hard. But I wouldn't quit. It's that thing in you, that leader in you that just won't quit. And it was T.D. Jakes books. Bishop T.D. Jakes book spoke to me. Now reposition yourself. So I got the word. I'm a leader. I just fell forward. It's a part of leadership. I got to learn something from it. So I, need, I went to writing. Everything I was learning. Everything that was unfolding. From me having to close my beautiful real estate office. And at this event, I'm going to show you ladies pictures of my totally renovated real estate office at the time that I'd already just, ooh, I went in with all of me and threw all my money in it, making it beautiful. I was buying the building in a very unique way. And the builder owner was a multi, 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 multi millionaire, so really rich, right? He said, I like your qualities. And I said, what qualities are those? He said, qualities to inspire change in others. The real estate broker said, this is the lady that should buy this building. And I'm going to let you do owner financing because we like your style. He's talking about my leadership qualities. Yes, a woman owning her own real estate brokerage against all odds. And with that being said, I was so set into a mind Said that, oh, ho, 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 there's nothing I can't do. He gave me courage to lead at a higher level. I want to give you courage to lead at a higher level. I want to tell you that leading at a higher level is actually more positive, more powerful, more impactful, and it makes more of a difference than leading at the lowest level you're going to find. Because we go to find those low level opportunities. If you can lead a workshop of five people, you can lead a workshop of 50. If you can lead a workshop of 50 people, you can lead a workshop of 500. So all of my girl from the project, I had a really exciting project, by the way. It was called Henley Homes. Then I moved even further from the project to a place called 48. We'll talk about all that at the event, how that helped me become the leader I am today. There's lessons all around you. That's the point I want you to grab. And in those lessons, you will continue to grow, number one, create, number two, and expand, number three. You will grow, create, and expand. We're going to teach strategizing. Okay, we're going to take this up, 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 a couple conversations. We're going to take you to a new dimension in understanding leader. Girl leader, girl leader in you, not just girl power, but you got to know how to utilize that power, strategizing it, leveraging it and increasing it for more revenue. How many of you, I got a question right now, and if you're ready to be raw and vulnerable, tell me how many of you have made $100,000 yet? If you have not made $100,000 yet, you have to touch that place that place will start to open up a whole new vision for you. Now, it's all about how you utilize the $100,000. You can't just go do all the things you want to do because it's just $100,000. But it is a great place to start. It will open up a few more vacations. Even if it just gives you two and they're just the way you want them. You get to do it just the way you want it. Wouldn't you want that? You get to open up to at least a few new pair of shoes, the ones you want, and you don't have to wait till they go on sale to buy them. These are things about women. These are personal things. If you need to take off work 
for three weeks because you do. You need some emotional recovery, rebooting time. You don't have to be so scared that you can't take care of you and your family. Or if you're a single woman, you need 100000 because there's no way you should be making it if you haven't reached that pinnacle of income. Because single women, they haven't set up anything for you to succeed. It's like you're out there on your own. And us married women, we have to keep things in check too. Because you just cannot only depend on your significant other. Because we're 100% in charge. We're the master of our fate. And the captain of our soul. So these changes that I made to get back up and save my family and save my business and transition my business all came through leadership traits. And when Bishop Jake's book told me, reposition yourself, I received strategy. So most of you who are leading and you're leading on a low level right now, you're doing everything right. You're just not doing it at the level you should. You may be a high level businesswoman running your own law practice, running your own podiatry center. I know women in all those areas. I have some of my personal friends. That does not mean there's not another level for you to lead at. You need to learn how to strategize what it is you do. You may be teaching, say, uh, you may be a podiatrist, then you should be probably leveraging that podiatry in a way where you teach it or you teach other podiatrists how to do what it is only you know how to do. You may be the woman that's at your workplace knowing you should be leading a project and you keep telling yourself that you're not worthy. There's a quote that's on the actual website that I'm going to direct you to in just a few that you're going to be able to take action to join me. March 24th, we kick off that Friday night in a wonderful moment of meeting each other. And we go all day Saturday in intensive training on how to up-level your leadership at Girl Lead 2017. <laughs> you either walk into your story and own your truth or you live outside of your story hustling. For your worthiness. Brene Brown wrote that. We're going to read her book. Some excerpts. To learn the secrets. Of up leveling. You may find yourself. Having moments when you're with me in March. Wanting to make the change. But there's something. Resisting the change. See people don't resist change. Humans. We resist to change. Because the change requires a part of you to actually surrender to the pain. It requires a part of you to tell your real truth. You don't know what you don't know, number one. You wish you knew more, number two. You don't get why you got to get support to actually get what you don't know. You just resist what it takes. You want the payoff. What I say and what I'm saying, what I'm saying sounds so good to you. I know. <laughs> but the truth is, leadership costs you something. So you don't know how to fit this in. $597 is what it costs to sit in that seat. And you don't know how to fit that in between possibly other obligations because you're a girl leader of your home. And you are battling with that. That's the only battle most women have. Investing in home or investing in me. But you don't realize something. The more you invest in home and don't invest in you, you downgrade your ability to increase. And when you keep downgrading your ability to increase, you become a low level, li a low level living woman. And what a low level living woman looks like. A broken leader. Leader with one wing. My favorite movie is Sparkle. And I love Bishop Jake's remake. Well, he getting all my love today, right, Bishop Jake's? Shout out to Bishop Jake's. Hallelujah. So, Sparkle the remake, and I love Sparkle the old one, but how Bishop Jake's used his leadership qualities to show us a different view of how a man doesn't have to kill us. I know, Bishop, now I didn't want you just to grab that part, Miss Pelzer. 
We didn't intend to kill the man in the movie, but she had to protect her what? Her sisters. She wasn't intending to kill him. She was in protection mode. So what we do is we go in protection mode of our families, of our immediate needs, but we forget one thing and that's what she forgot. That her dreams and her visions, and she was a beautiful, a talented, brilliant singer. She was not ready to do what it takes to up level. She thought she could get where she wanted to go by way through that type of relationship. And it didn't work out for her. So when you're trying to choose between home or the personal lifestyle or the personal values or the personal needs versus your need, you're choosing wrong. It is through you that all things are created. One man created with the help of man. But right now I'm talking to you. When you invest in you, you already learned one secret. So we're going to learn secrets to up level. We're going to go over four powerful areas, right? Four powerful areas. When you go to the site, you'll see we're going to go over four powerful areas, but these are complex components to transforming your leadership. This is stuff you really should know because if you knew it already, you don't need to come in the room with me. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know it all. I have support. I hired a coach. I have two or three powerful women around me that pour in me and help me learn and expand on a regular basis. I hired Lisa Nichols as my coach in September. I took on <laughs> an investment that most women are saving for to buy her first house, furnish her first house, or her second house, or put her children in college. That's not what it costs. But I will tell you, that's not to impress you. I want to impress upon you. The big picture visionary, oh, we're open. Say open. We're open to exactly what we know it costs to be great. Great costs, good is free. I did an event here in my hometown in December. And I want to talk to you ladies about something really, 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 really wrong. I did an event here in my hometown in September, I mean in December. And at the end of the year, I always give back. I give back to women who lead, that are leading in our community, usually unsung sheroes, women that some women don't even know. Sometimes the world needs to know, but will never know. Because she's not ready to level up, become that big picture visionary. Because it's so scary, right? You're not alone in that. And the event was beautiful. I planned it flawless. Some things happened the day of the event. Some people couldn't show up that were supposed to be there to help the event be its very, very best. My daughter, you know, that's my girl. Go in with me hard. She showed up in her best. My interns showed up in their best their mothers barbara if you're out there thank you for always lending your girl leader to me if you're out there thank you thank you thank you ladies for being a part of what we do here at girl go be great these girls are phenomenal they're headed to college one is already in college and i will promise you they are what we want to remember they are looking at us so we'll keep that just in our hearts, right? But this is an up-level conversation. And some things fell apart. The caterer backed out the last minute. He was sick. Whew. I've had to really digest this in bite-sized pieces. I was attacked after my event. The food was served later than... It should have. My husband had to get in there and cater. My husband is a caterer by trade. He's a Johnson & Wales graduate. But my husband has not been feeling his, way, his, his best. He's had foot surgery. He's been down for about four months, recovering through the process. And he stretched. And we found a caterer who was willing to come in and assist my husband. So that meant I had to pay more and more for what I already budgeted for. 
to ensure this event went off the way I envisioned it. We got awards in and some of the awards were broken. 10 awards came out of 62 broken. They were in the box as my interns opened the box. Miss Lori, oh my God. So it was a whole box and it was 10 in that box broken. So I had to figure out how to share that. As I was presenting my talk, possibilities, I could see faces, but I could feel their energy. And their energy made anyone want it to be greater, want people to do more, shut down. But I kept going. The food table, one side of the food table, which was a beautiful table, we had this at a high level place, beautiful, gorgeous decor, high level linens, centerpieces to love for, and one part of the table fell. And at that moment, all of the hiring the girl band, God love the girl. Ooh, girl, go be great. Love you. The talents that are within us, the gifts. I couldn't for a moment see how beautiful the girl band performed, how beautiful the models we bought in performed, how beautiful and, and, and impactful the minister we bought in, LaWanda Hill, who runs Women on Fire Academy, has her own ministry church, a ministry at her own church in Louisiana, came in, flew in, how the women who poured out at the front of the room, not just about Lori Pelzer, but what they gained in working with Lori Pelzer and how their leader in them had shifted, everything was just crashing around me in my brain. So I had to arrest the thoughts and I had to say, you will lead to the last drop of you. How many of you ready to lead when you're being attacked? How many of you willing to stay in the leader that you are when you're being attacked? And then I actually went on Facebook and saw that there were some women that were at the event. And it was just a little small group of them. And they were tagging each other, showing pictures of the event when people had already left and food that never they said never got served. That was not a true accurate depiction of that night. So I got immediately, immediately angry. And I went back over the course of 24, 48, 72 hours into again, my leader in me. I had a chance to counsel with my daughter who has a counseling degree, by the way, from Mercer University and her master's. I had an opportunity to go read some works of my coach, Lisa Nichols, who shared, we will not have confrontation, but rather carefrontation. And then I tapped back in to how a woman should lead. So then I wrote a letter to everyone who were involved as a recipient. And we started getting pouring in women who said it was beautiful, Lori, it was great, there was a few hiccups, you are phenomenal. It's not about me though. But they're talking about the leader they see in me. See, leadership costs something. And it ain't always gonna be pretty. It's like that poem, life ain't no crystal stair. There will be thorns and splinters in your leader. So some of you are just hiding. Your big picture visionary can't come forth and do and be what you want it to be and do what you want to do in that vision because you're scared of failing in front of people. Well, I didn't fail. Those eight to nine women who decided to gel together, their low leader woman in them, they were the ones that failed. I'm getting back up and I'm going to do it again this year in December, but I will not, not miss those moments of what I learned from that event as a leader. I'm going to even invite women back so she get the better part of the experience if she missed some. Those are qualities of a leader. My big vision picture, whoa. It's like me and my daughter, we talk about women's shelters where women can bring not only them and their daughter, but if she's running from trouble and danger, she should be able to bring her, her daughter, her cat, her son, her five sons. What sense does that make to me? For you to deny her 
to bring her family when she's in danger. We're going to create what the market doesn't have. See, that's your big picture visionary. My other big picture visionary is traveling the world. My daughter wants to Africa. She wants us to explore doing work in Africa. I'm a girl from the projects, ladies. How you get from the projects to Africa? In your picture that you paint. How do you plan to get there? Up leveling your leader in you. This is all about leaders. Because leaders put it on the line. Leaders take more risk. Leaders show up very differently when they're in a big picture mindset. We're going to go in on March 24th, 25th. Changing mindset first. Repositioning you inside. Then we're going to do the outer work. Repositioning you on the outside. What sense does it make? If you want to go create some big, beautiful, bold work of yours, when you have some stuff inside you that's not quite clear. You don't know how to play at a larger level because you've got stuff holding you back from that. So we got to go inner first. Where there's no inner work, there's no outer success. That's why a lot of women go outer first. I know a lot of you go, the first thing you do when you want to start a business or you want to get a raise at your job, you go outer. You go get your really pretty clothes. You go get your hair slamming. Don't y'all like my new hair, by the way? I want to do some old and something really uh, energetic. I'm getting ready to get in this gym and lose these 12 to 15 pounds, and it might be 17 or 18.5. <laughs> but for sure, I have got to upgrade my leader in me. To know that no leader can lead out of an empty cup. So gaining weight when you know you shouldn't be. Because it's not good for your heart healthy. It's not good for you overall as a woman. If it doesn't make you feel good. Then it's not supposed to belong to you. So I'm going to release the weight. But this time I'm doing it for a bigger reason. So some of us just need a bigger reason. We're going to explore eight area core areas. Specifically to yielding higher results. These areas are going to actually help you make money. While you're making a difference, we're going to talk about how to be heard in a loud, noisy marketplace. Kind of like what you see me do, but there's so many other ways to do it than just go create a full radio show and really honestly not be able to facilitate that radio show because there are things that you still need to understand how to. We're going to talk about the components of how you really collaborate and why that's important. I have several partnerships right now. Ladies, I'm not just doing this alone. A woman on the island alone is a dead woman. We are tribal. History tells us that. So I just want to really let you understand that if you're doing it alone, you're dying alone. You can't say I don't trust women. There is a woman trustworthy. What problem might the problem might be is we don't trust what we might do or not do. We don't trust where we fall short. So we're going to explore these mindsets as well as I'm going to give you strategy. Now you get to peel back the curtain with me. Say peel back. I'm going to share with you some concepts that I have gotten only by being in very high level rooms. See, you got to pay to come in these rooms. You got to say, I'm invested at the highest level. So for those of you who are ready, Already I've spoke to you. Girl Go Be Great was created when I fell down and I had to learn how to get back up. But I used leadership qualities to do it. Where I sit today, ladies, creating from this place you most all have been following me and journaling this journey with me. I create this from a place of higher big visionary mindsets. I put it on the line. I risk it every day. Some days it's scarier than others. But you can't get anything from nothing. You can't gain success when you're not going forward to success. You can't go and create a million dollar company when you haven't yet earned your way or learned or scaled your way to 225 or 250 or 400. There is a process. This is not a microwave process. So, Acres of Diamonds, the book is powerful. He talked about, in a nutshell, how the African farmer went around searching everywhere for diamonds. He purchased his farm because he heard there were diamonds on the farm. And when he explored his farm 
for diamonds he never found. He got very, very despondent. He became very, very depressed. And eventually he committed the act of death by personal infliction. Committed suicide. Threw himself in the river and died. Years and years he'd been searching for something he couldn't find. But he was told that there were, they were there. He was told they were there. So then another Af a farmer come along and purchased his farm. He explored every inch of that farm. But he explored it in a different kind of way. With a different kind of mindset. With a different type of openness. Openness. <laughs> I twist that word up, right? With a different kind of intention. Setting intentions is a lot of part, larger part of up-leveling your leadership. How do we set powerful intentions? It's very different than writing down a goal. I'm going to teach you the difference and how I'm stepping into places I only dreamed and some I didn't even dream of. Some of the things that are happening in my life, some of the relationships I'm building, some of the places I find myself sitting when I'm in San Diego and I'm sitting and I'm looking and it's so far away from 48 and it's so far away from Henley Homes. And it's so far away when I was working in McDonald's at 14 and having to bring my check home to my mom. It's so far away from teen pregnancy, being embarrassed, feeling like trash, even though my family would try to love on me. It was so far away from that place. And I cry. I sit and I cry. I'm sitting at luxury hotels. And I go, God, why me? And God always answers back to remind me. Why not you? If not you, then who? So I ask you, if not you, then who? That's what happened with the next farmer. He knew it was supposed to be him. Most of you don't know that. Some of you do know it, but you still need more to get there. You should be making far more difference. There's far more for you to do. And you should be making far more money doing it. And this guy found the diamonds. And it, what? It became like history. <laughs> he found diamonds all over the farm. They were everywhere, everywhere his feet went. The thing you take from that story, when the training around this story um, happened and it was a training built, I was just so excited because the training says we don't go and explore every inch of our what? Our acres. And the other part to take is we don't know what the diamond looks like in its rough state. I told my daughter the morning, I didn't know that I was looking for a life better when really what I should have been looking for is a life greater. But you don't know what you don't know. Like my coach Lisa Nichols always say, you don't know what you don't know. And like my coach Susie Carter says, Lori, what would be the payoff if you did it. So what would be the payoff if you joined me in March? If you put you first and we explored every inch of your acres of leader woman in you and you, what would be the outcome? Not yet. What would be the payoff? Not just a better leader, a greater leader, a woman that can go out here and create and do some freaking amazing things. I've overcome so many odds and obstacles. I'm not alone. I've become a professional speaker. I'm not alone. The women who gain this knowledge are the women that's willing to what? Show up to it. Invest in her. Why do you have to pay money? My last statement to you today. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for spending time with me here on your Saturday you hungry. I know it. I see it all the time on social media, all the social medias. It's a great way for us to reach out and say we need something. So it's perfect, right? Why do we resist the money? Because the money 
is a release of something that you don't quite understand the power of. Because of the way you see the money, that's the way you live and have your being. And it's comfortable to know that you're in control of the money. But when you release it to something you're not quite sure about, you don't know about, you just feeling there's something in you says, I know this sounds like me, what I need. But you're tapping into the unknown. So you're releasing your money in the unknown. And when you release anything into the unknown, it scares you. You don't know what's required of you. You don't know how you're going to show up to it. But I just say to you, money is energy. So the energy that you want to be great, the money is a part of it. It's an exchange of greatness. We're going to talk about money. Because if you can't get this money thing right with you, we just did that work in Global Leaders with Lisa Nichols. We talked about our money blueprint. And I was one of the first to get on the hot seat. Because I come from a money paradigm that ain't no dang money. Shoot. <laughs> I was scared of money. I'm working on me. Great leaders have to have money conversations. They're a part of you up leveling. If you can't do this, then you have to find someone to help you. Support you. So I stand in this place with you. I want to support you. We're going to put the link for you to go take action today, I'm only taking 20 women. And there's a reason for that, but you won't know the reason until we get in the room. We're going to be in beautiful Charlotte, South Park, Marriott, South Park. When you secure, you have two options. You can pay in full for $5.97 and be done. Very easy, very simple. If you want to join us and be one of the 20 women to uplevel your leader in you, you get to and you need a budget plan. And we understand that too. <laughs> you can. I truly understand it. <laughs> Been there, done that. And I still use budget plans even at a higher level. So I'm not here to fake it. I want you to know the truth. We too use budget plans. They make sense. They allow you to leverage. To still be able to do other things you need to do. While you're doing what is absolutely necessary that you do. You get to pay $7.97. Because we got to handle your money and we have to prepare for you in a very different way. So you get a two pay option. You will pay half of that at the time of you getting connected and getting your seat and getting registered. And then the other part will be due at a later date. I want to answer any questions. I want to take any comments or any thoughts that you may have. You can do that in a couple ways. You can call me direct today. I'm actually in my office for a little while longer before I go and enjoy the rest of this beautiful South Carolina day. And you can call me direct at 803-238-0511. I want to hear from you. I want to take your call. There are women that I'm reaching out to personally because I know there's a leader in her that's ready to go level up. For those of you who really do know you're ready to lead. You're not leading in the way you want to or you know you want to lead at a higher level. This is for you. For those of you who just want to come and enjoy a moment of girlfriends, that's not going to be the opportunity. This one won't be the opportunity for you. But if you're ready to enjoy like-minded women, really stretching for greatness, strategizing, implementing, learning revenue in your leader qualities, Increasing in ways just in knowledge before it's external. This is the room for you We're gonna have a beautiful beautiful moment together Friday night We all will be getting together at 7 30 p.m. So long as you check in before then You get an opportunity to fly into the Charlotte Airport which is the international airport it makes it very simple and easy and We're not very far from the airport at all. So it makes it easy again Yes, I want to make it a little easier for you to get there now, when you get there, I'm not guaranteeing you nothing easy. I am guaranteeing you an amazing experience. So I'm looking forward to serving you in your greatness. And my last, very last point. Getting back up again and very much being in this place I'm in today tells me that leader in us as girls 
she is always ready for a new part of her to unfold, to be revealed. And what you got to do, I'm going to reveal in the room. I said, there's one thing missing to know that there's another level of you to be yield. I mean, to, that's journey for you to be what unfolded. It's one thing you got to do, though, to actually experience it. And it's missing. It's missing in most of all women. And I'm going to share that with you when we're in the room. I said yes again and again and again and again. And the more I say yes, the more things open and open and open. It's like the caterpillar to the butterflies. Why my company symbolizes the butterfly. The opening process to beauty. The beauty within you. The greatness that's ready to come out of you. And great costs something. You have to invest upward. Good is free. You can just sit and listen to me on these kind of live streams or video and maybe get a nugget. Absolutely. I'm always wanting to bring you value. But to spread your wings and go be great, that's going to cost. So ladies, it's been my pleasure serving you today. Have a really great Saturday. I'm looking forward to being in your winning circle with you and sharing greatness with you. March 24th and the 25th, I'll be in Charlotte. Share with girlfriends, bring one, be a part of each other's greatness, and let's go do this. Let's go do this thing that women 100 years prior to us have paved the way, because now it's not just about equality. It's about what? Power play, positioning, and that's what we're going to do in that room. Nothing is left undone. So take a look at the link that we're going to post right here in the video. You can click the link. You can go ahead and start the process of getting registered. And I look forward to serving you. And in between time, girl, go be great. <laughs>